Good morning, everyone. My name is Chongqing Qi. I'm from University of Houston. Today, I'm going to talk about underwater wireless communication using coil based magnetic induction, otherwise, it's Dr. Ji Fu Shen. And this is a joint research with Dr. Miao Pan. Magnetic induction has been widely used in various applications. One example can be wireless charging or wireless power transfer. The wireless charging is very popular nowadays, as you can see in the first figure. One transmitting coil can charge the receiving coils in these devices, and that's based on the magnetic induction. And the second application is radio frequency identification, also known as RFID. This technology has been extensively studied, and it is very powerful. The third one is magnetic induction search. The coil can be used to find the magnetic bodies Today, I'm going to focus this, our study on, on water wireless communication. In the left figure, there are some sensors deployed on the water and uh, they are used to collect the ocean data. The data needs to, send, need to be sent back to the service station for further processing. There are three primary methods to realize this. First one is uh, acoustic communication. It's very popular, but it has some drawbacks including low data rate, high power consumption, and high propagation delay. The second one is the radio, radio frequency communication. It is only used in some specific applications, such as short range security communication, as it suffers from severe attenuation in the seawater. The third one is the optical communication. It's, it's very fast, but it has strong absorption and really scattering. So to address these issues, we propose to use the magnetic induction coil to realize the underwater wireless communication. Although the operating distance is limited between two coils, we can use multiple coils as relay coil to achieve long distance communication. So you can, you can see in the left figure, the sensor ne network sends the data to the AUVs, and the AUVs send the data to the robotic fish. And finally, the robotic fish can send the data to the service station. We call this uplink. So here is my offline. I will first talk about the theoretical analyze, including the coupling coefficient equivalent circuit and the bandwidth. And then I will introduce the experiment and simulation setup. After that, I will show some experiment results. And finally, I will draw the conclusion. So this figure sh shows the two coils. And uh, uh, we can see the coil one and the coil two. And coil one is, is excited by a voltage source. This figure shows the basic idea of magnetic induction. The coil one is the primary coil and the induced, uh, the induced magnetic field will cope with the second coil. This is the famous Faraday's law of induction. The coupling between two coils determines the electromotive force. The coupling coefficient is, the, is defined as this, the K, here, K depends on the M and L. Here, M is the mutual inductance and L is the self-inductance. And the M and L are defined here. So, the, in these two equations, I0 is the excitation current, and N1 and N2 are the number of turns for the transmitter and the receiver. RT is the coil radius and RW is the wire radius. And E phi is the electric field defined in the spherical coordinate. So in order to validate the accuracy of the coupling coefficient, we compare the theoretical results with the simulation results from Pamsel. We calculate the coefficient both in air in and in seawater. The parameters are listed in this table. Here we can see 
in left figure, a good agreement between the simulation and the, the theory obtained. And also, we find the coupling coefficient decreased as the transmission distance increased. This is due to the field strength is weaker. Also, we notice that the coupling coefficient decays faster in the water than that in the, in the air due to the sea water is lossy. Here, we show the equivalent circuit of the coil induction. We only can see the series valence and the transmitted circuit. The equivalent capacitor, resistor, and the inductor are connected in series. The coils are equivalent as a transformer. The transmission coil is regarded as the primary winding, and the receiving coil is second winding. We apply the Kirchhoff the voltage law, and the two equations are obtained. Solving these two equations, we can get the frequency response. So if given the known parameters, this frequency response is a function of uh, uh, the coupling coefficient. So here, we com compare three different values. The k equals to 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and 0 0.001. We find the received signal is amplified six times as the coefficient increased from 0 0.001 to 0 0.1. We can see the yellow curve and the blue curve. And also, 3 dB bandwidth is increasing from 1 kilohertz to 7 kilohertz. So the more coupling will increase the signal strength and also the bandwidth. Next, let's talk about, let's talk about the simulation setup. Here we use the USRP, a software-defined radio device. The upper block is a transmitter. We generate the input signal using MATLAB Simulink, and the, the transmit the uh, transmit the signal using USRP. Similarly, in the lower block, the output signal of the coil is picked up by the USRP in receiving side, and then data is processed by MATLAB Simulink. Here, let's talk about the experiment, experiment set up. This is a test bed in the lab. In the first photo, two coils are emerged in the water tank. And the transmitter coil is connected with a laptop, and the receiving coil is connected with a oscilloscope for data acquisition. We change the mutual distance between the transmitting coil and the receiving coil to investigate the effective communication distance. In the right photo, we attach the coil on a blue AV and place the transmit coil on, a, on the floor to mimic the communication between the sensor network and the, the AUVs. So in our experiment, a message Hello world through underwater MI wireless communication is modulated and used as used as the input signal. The mutual distance between two coils is 32 inches. So in the first test, the message is modulated by QPSK scheme and the sample rate is three kilo samples. The constellation diagram shows that the received signal can be demodulated as the samples are well separated. We can see the feed error rate is zero. In second plot, we just increase the sample rate to six kilosamples. We just double. We notice that samples cannot be separated and we cannot demodulate the receive, receive signal. So compared with the first example, we find the equalizer is required in the high data rate scenario. And following the same procedure, we add a linear equalizer before demodulation. 
and we find the six kilo simple QPSK scheme works well, and bit average is zero. To further explore the potential of the data, data rate using the MI in underwater first communication, we apply the 16 QAM as a motivation scheme. We find it, it still works if there is a small bit, bit error rate around 1%. But compared with the QPSK, the 16 QAM has a narrow spectral width. So the speed error rate is still acceptable. And finally, we have some conclusions. In this work, we introduce an underwater wireless communication system based on magnetic induction. The magnetic induction in our study used, used two coils. And the coupling coefficient between two coils are investigated. And we, we gave the equivalent circuit to determine the available bandwidth. We also designed the MI test bed and perform the experiments in the water. And the, ex the experiment results show that uh, the coil-based magnetic induction is capable of realizing high data rate. It can up to 20, 24 kilo samples for this communication in a certain distance, which is 32 inches. And this work was supported by National Science Foundation Thank you.